100 pendulums, baby. Let's go. You don't need to break the bank to put up 100 negates. In fact, you don't even need to break $100 to put up 100 negates. All you need is to just listen to the pen god and watch the whole video. And you need to smash the subscribe button and smash the like button. And that'll be the only effort you'll need to build the best budget deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! ever. So if you guys are excited for this video, I want you to smash the subscribe button. I want you guys to also smash the like button. Let's get this video to 1,000 likes and let's get the channel to 50,000 subscribers. That being said, it's time to showcase you guys the greatest budget pendulum deck in the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Pendulums, right here, right now. Let's go. <laughs> And before we get into this absolutely incredible video, I want to mention right now that for a limited time only, I'm offering Pendulum Coaching, Yu-Gi-Oh! Coaching. I'm the type of friend to read a math book and I'll coach you in some math and some accounting while we're at it. So if you guys want to go get coached down in the description below, check out the link. So while you're there, check out the Patreon for an extra discussion on budget pendulums. And you gotta check out the beautiful playmats of Trip Gaming as well. Anyways, it's time to showcase the power of budget pendulums right here. Let's go. So in this video, I'm gonna showcase why and just exactly why budget pendulums could do exactly what normal pendulums can. I mean, look at it. Look at them. Like, just look at what I'm about to do. Yeah, how 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 expensive is Servant of Endymion? Can anyone please tell me how expensive is a Servant of Endymion? Despite the fact of being a thousand dollar card in my eyes it's actually just about four cents so if you guys can't afford that then i don't know what to tell you other than get a job baby because pendulums every card in the main deck is worth five cents at most unfortunately i guess they just forgot how broken this deck is but that's fine now if you look at this how much is how much is oracle of zephyr i don't know 17 17 cents how much is jackal king i don't know maybe two cents how much is pendulum call i don't know maybe 18 cents i don't know how about you get out your piggy bank get out a little four dollars four loonies and you'll get yourself an entire pendulum deck i hate to admit it but this is an extremely cheap deck this is as budget as it gets if you guys actually think about it what what's the actual expensive card magician souls how about you just don't play magician souls i'm busy i'm busy making a video my friends don't understand that being a pen god yeah, i'm a busy guy i'm busy hello yo i'm making a video right now i'll call you later all right pen best deck all right later my brother knows what's good pen best deck baby anyways let's move on to our video now i want you guys to look at everything on the field is anything on this field right now worth more than a dollar like is any is anything worth more than two cents no no and if it is it's because the person you're getting it from is ripping you off all right you go find at the back of someone's binder you find one of these pendulum edition cords you find one of these zephyr cords and you get them all don't worry i will show the list at the very end there we go the one expensive card in the deck mascarena i don't care you got a hundred dollar budget you're building a pendulum deck you're building the best deck in the planet here you can at least afford a hundred dollar total for the entire main deck extra deck side deck the main deck's like 30 bucks the side deck's like 30 bucks the extra deck's like 30 bucks and then you get yourself a beautiful trip gaming playmat for 30 bucks call it a day ask for 10 percent discount it equals like 100 bucks or something like that anyways so look at this you end up with mighty master jackal dweller mascarena divine strike five negates bro dweller jackal master mascarena divine strike and you celestial searches joker at the end phase this is absolutely insane and tell me is any deck in the planet beating this hell no so now we're going to game two i'm blindsiding by the way shout out my boy ruski we are facing off against my dog here i already know he's playing drytron because that's the deck he's most known for playing and he has himself an absolutely broken hand he has cyber emergency droplets well cyber emergency pre-prep and pot this will do a whole combo but on top of those interruptions he also has droplets and twins which is very sad for us but that's all right so as you see the sphere mode i know sphere mode's a little expensive lava golem's a few bucks but these cards just there's no other card you can play in the meta realistically if we had droll here we were probably fine but droll the thing with droll is only good versus drytron and i want to prep this deck it's a budget deck i want to make sure that this deck that we build 
lasts for generations to come. I want your kid to be able to play this deck and not to have anything hit. So Drone Lockbird is only good situationally in formats when decks like Drytron and Pendulums are relevant in the meta. And you know what? Drytron after Bentan or Eva get banned to Oblivion, which by the way, there's gonna be a banless video tomorrow. Let's go. I'm excited to show you guys the best banless of all time. And but Sphere Mode and Lava Golem, they're timeless, bro. They're timeless. They're like pendulums. They're like TFC. They're they're timeless. They just they don't lose. They don't go anywhere. There'll always be a place for them in a meta, especially in a pendulum deck. So I want to build a deck here that could be lasting for formats to come. So you guys don't have to waste money on side deck cards every single format. That's the idea I see as budget. You want to build something that's lasting, that's not going to get hit, and if anything, it's just going to get better. And that's literally this deck, as you see. Pendulums will never die. This will be the shittiest Pendulums will ever be, and it's already the best deck. So it's only up to Mount Olympus from here. My opponent here, Ruski, ends on Herald, Dragoon, Beatrice, Link Haribo, Twin Twister, Double Hit. Oh my goodness, this is not looking too hot, I'm not going to lie. The Sphere Mode's going to be nice. And you know what? At this point, I'm like, yo, I'm going to 2-0 here. I'm gonna, this is going to be a swift 2-0. See ya with all those cards. And my hand's insane here. Mastery. But we are going to get absolutely obliterated here by the Twin Twister. The double berries in hand doesn't do anything for us. Because if you think of this logically, we're going to be chain blocking a lot. He's going to deal with the Jackal. And he's going to waste his entire hand. But the Twin Twister does destroy us there. If not for the Twin Twister... We're going to do a very big brain play, but we're going to clear everything he had, forcefully make him waste his, his heralds, and we would have been smooth sailing from there. But, unfortunately, we got hit with it. That's fine. That's what game three is for. So, I'm going to show both of our hands here. We're dealing with droplets and a herald. This is intense, guys. We're dealing with droplets and herald. But we're playing a budget deck. He's playing $100 droplets, guys. Could we play through droplets only? Our whole deck main deck side and extra is worth this one card over here alone so i don't know could budget decks play in Yu-Gi-Oh? how about you guys wait and see and you'll figure out for yourselves here i go joker trying to force a herald here he doesn't he doesn't go for the bait that's fine i go pen call here i search the harmo first i scale abductor effect to add the zephyr nui this way i could search the counter trap if i want to i pendulum two now i want you guys to see my hand here do i pendulum harmonizing as well I know he's playing Drytron. One thing that people don't understand about budget decks is we have access to every single rank four in Yu-Gi-Oh. We're playing Magicians, we're playing level fours, we're playing everything. So he opts to go Herald here. I called by the fuck out of that Herald. That, call, that Herald could, could nev will never see the light of day again. So what do I do in this scenario? Well, I search for Nine Pillars Yangtze. I don't search for the Zephyr Providence because I set up Dweller backed up by a Counter Trap. This right here is impossible to out. And there's a reason I didn't pendulum this harmonizing. If I pendulum something that harmonizing magician, I was very susceptible to a Nibiru. I don't want to lose to Nibiru. I want to win against every hand trap. And despite playing a budget deck here, a very the whole deck's under 90 bucks USD. Uh, we still don't lose. We still play around every hand trap, and we still win. If he drilled us, we didn't care either. Look at our hand; it was insane. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna wait to, for him to. Uh, do a little i probably should have chained dweller to the uh prep just in case he had an impermanence he has droplets but i was prepared to negate the droplets with my counter trap instead i negate the, the prep that way he doesn't get the free card and i add with zephra he sets one i'm just gonna go off here i know this is a droplets for a fact and i'm gonna just go off and win here i get the jackal out so i can ensure protection through nibiru sork i get follow-ups and that's it i just try to get all the follow-up possible all this negates but i don't even need many negates bro I normal summon here, I attack, he goes droplets, I protect it through the nib just in case, he has, if he has nib, nib droplets is fine, and we're fine, we're in a perfect scenario here, and there's just nothing we could do to lose here, I end up going on top of a gallant, I get another follow up, I set a counter trap, I get mascarina, dweller, jackal, there's budget by the way, this is turn 2, this is turn 2, our usual endemian deck does not have this much gas on turn 2, we started our turn with one card, we had 5 cards at the end phase, with the counter trap, unbelievable, this deck's insane, so for all the lucky viewers that have st stayed tuned for this entire time, I'm not going to showcase you guys the deck list for all the lucky viewers. Let's go. This is the deck list. And before we get into it, I want you guys to do me a massive favor and smash the subscribe button and like button. It does, it helps me out greatly. And if you guys love what you see about budget pendulums, I don't even ask for a favor. The only favor I ask, 
Smash the like button, guys. I want to get I want to get a billion subscribers. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. And then we can do this video every single day. Let's go. I'm going to get into the discussion now, and I want you guys to see exactly what I said in the beginning of the video. Do you see any card in the main deck over $1? Be honest. What, Upstart Goblins? Like, bro, Celestial Magician. I heard it uh, got reprinted in LED. This card's like two cents. Everything here is two cents, okay? This deck is unbelievably cheap, and it puts out negates like nothing. As far as good cards to open, Servant is insane to open. Can we all agree? Can we agree Abductor is insane to open? Can we agree that Zephyroth is insane to open? Can we agree that Harmonizing is insane to open? Can we agree that Joker is insane to open? Can we agree that Sorcerer is insane in this deck to open? Because you get the Joker and then the Harmonizing and the point, whatever the hell you want. Celestial literally is just a slower Joker, but does the same thing. Zephyr Nui is a plus one insane to open. Poison for utility. Zephyr Dubin utility. Jackal player on Nibiru. Mighty Master. Blow up everything. Time Star. Search Mighty Master. If you want to play Time Star, I opted not to. But if you want to, Master Research Servant. Zephyr Power Search Zephyr. Oracle of Zephyr. Search Zephyr. Terraforming Search Oracle of Zephyr. Pen Call Alliance. Get the Harmonizing. Upstart. This is like literally 38 broken fucking cards. Like every card in this. You have 36 cards that are plus ones. With the exception of Poison, Zephyr Thuban, and Double Trap. But all four of those are required for utility and negates. And because you're playing so many Zephyras, these actual traps are insane. Because if you open a Zephyr, a Wait to Zephyr Nui already, and a Providence, you just don't activate Providence. You save the Providence for the very end to get the other trap you're missing. So you always end on Double Trap if you open two Zephyr cards. It's insane. And because you're playing so much Wait to Harmonizing, it's insane, man. This deck's actually insane, and the fact that it's so budget, it's ridiculous. In fact, if you're not playing that competitively and you don't want, you just want to play with your friends and not build a side deck, this side deck is worth 30 bucks. You remove this side deck and remove this Mascarena, and you could build the entire extra deck and main deck for 50 fucking dollars. Do you have any idea how unbelievable that is? To have a deck that puts up six negates for under 50 dollars with main deck and extra deck, it's actually insane. So side deck, this is the ones you're playing. The reasoning behind Droll, like I said, we would play Droll over like Dark Ruler or Sphere Mode, but it's not timeless. Droll could very easily not be a card next format. And if we're playing a budget deck, I want to build you a side deck that could last for multiple formats to come. And these cards are timeless. Every card in here, you play one Secret Village going first, and one Call By going first, the rest going second. I don't even need to explain what they all do. They're insane. All right, as for the extra deck, you need the Mascarena. One Selene. I would love to play two Selene, but because we're playing budget, we're just playing one. Mascarena comes up a lot just simply because of the Zephyr Nui. You don't want the Zephyr Nui to sit there dead a lot of the times. The Zephyr Nui is massive, and I highly advise because of the Zephyr Nui, you play the Mascarena as well. You play three Nightmares. The utility comes up a lot with the Zephyr Nui that just sits there. And then you got Appaloosa and Boral Sword. Great. Boral Sword is a fantastic card to play over Axis Code, and you need to play the Nightmares to kind of do the Axis Code's job. Then you just jump into Boral Sword. Dweller, best negate. Baguska, great. Tornado, great. Exiton, poor man Zeus. Can't afford a, can't afford a $50 Zeus? Play Evil Storm Exiton Knight. You could catch your opponent sleeping. They don't understand what's going on with it. You could play this. You could play Gallant or Time Star here. Uh, Time Star is cool because sometimes you can go Sork, pop your scale, Time Star with like a random card, search Mighty Master, Mighty Master, blow up the board. But because we're not playing Souls, I just opted not to play Time Star. And you can still search Mighty Master by a multitude of ways. You got Triple Mastery. You got Abductor and Mighty Master whenever you need to search it. You go Servant, Special the Mighty Master. Mighty Master, negate a spell, bounce itself back to the hand, scale, destroy everything. See, so you have eight ways to Mighty Master if you really need to. I felt that was enough. But if you want to go by Time Star over Gallant, Gallant ends up searching the Zephyrath. And at times where you want to go Exiton, if you have four rank fours and the four level fours in the field, you just enter battle, kill everything that's an issue. Then you just go into Gallant, search the follow up to the Zephyr Nui, go Exiton, blow everything up, and you have a great follow up. And then you just set your trap that you searched. So it's actually pretty cool. Then this is a rank four card that I think is also a very, very good alternative to Zeus. As you see, this is a level four deck. So a great alternative to Zeus here is Dread number 27, Dreadnought, Dreadnoid, and Super Quantum Great Magnus. The reason why what this card does is you XYZ over this card over any two level fours. You just make two level fours. You can even put three level fours if you want to have more materials for Magnus. And when this card destroys a monster by battle, at the end of the battle phase, you special Magnus on top of it. And Magnus is absolutely insane. 3600 attack, can't be dealt with, unaffected by card effects. Like, 
if you put four materials on there but the main reason you want to play it is that it's an amazing interruption once per turn during the main phase quick effect you can detach a material from this card shuffle any card in the field into the deck non-targeting deals with dragoon deals with so many problems that you might encounter the card just overall just absolutely insane so when you compare the combine this with counter traps after you clear the board your opponent can't do shit so and one ignister this is another card to out dragoon uh but you could always just rank any rank four basically out dragoon as well but still ignister is just very nice to have as utility combining it with purple poison the fact that purple poison is searchable by half your deck it's, it's just insane hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys got this far i want you to smash the subscribe button smash the like button check out the links below check out the patreon check out the coaching guys limited time only check out the play mats as well and check out the streams because we do this live on stream every single day so i hope you guys enjoyed the video i'm thirsty i've been talking a lot this whole video stay hydrated and i'll see you guys in the next video peace Let's go! See you guys in the next video. Peace. <laughs>